the Egyptian, of course, uh, letters were H, R, and the uh, these vowel sounds have been added by speculation. It was probably pronounced Hari or Hari. Uh, the the Greeks, as did the uh, Hebrews, uh, used the L for the R sound. <coughs> This is very interesting when you look at the Hebrew letters R and L, which are very similar, and also the uh, uh, Egyptian glyphs for R and L are identical. Here the syllabus and the aspirate are exchanged, and the uh, R and the L are interchanged. Here we have a, uh, the loss of the initial aspirate, as in the Hebrew. Same thing. Uh, uh, this meaning lion in Hebrew. Here, here it means uh, this is the name of the sun. And over here, the meaning that's given for Ali, the holy name of, of Allah or Ali, is Most High, which is a kind of an associative uh, meaning. The, of course, the uh, secular scholars say that this name of the Hebrew deity is uh, actually this was a soul or deity. And again, this uh, deity is the, uh, the Egyptian form uh, of Heliopolis, uh, of, that worshipped at Heliopolis as uh, Heli, or Hiru, or Hari. And <coughs> this is the, like the dialectical variant of uh, Hari seen in India as Sura, S-R, this is another variation of that. This is the Zoroastrian uh, or Avestan uh, form of Havare. And maybe uh, the clue to what the Subarian people uh, actually were. There's so much uh, interchange between the use of the terms Subarian and Hurian in ancient sources that scholars have speculated that uh, the, um, the actual name Subarian with the, uh, the consonal values of an S, a B, R, and then the end on it, <coughs> uh, may actually be a dialectical form of the, of the word uh, Hurian. Now, if we look at this, we see that if the syllable is uh, uh, substituted for the aspirate here, and the B for V, which was a common exchange, R, and then we, we look at the longer form of this word, which was Harena, uh, it may in fact have been Subarian, and for the meaning of it again, this is very important, um, this word being the name of the deity, and we look at the dialectical form in uh, India of Sura instead of Hari. Uh, it's actually uh, astounding how, how it emerges and, and uh, is completely uh, um, intelligible. This, in fact, then becomes Sfar, as in Svarga, the name of the deity, uh, as Suvar, or Sfar, uh, whose abode is Farga, or heaven. And <coughs> therefore, uh, they're correct in their idea that actually Subar, as in Subarian, uh, is another linguistic uh, variant of Hare, or Hare, as in Hurian. That accounts for why the Hurians are also called Subarians by some. Now, this is a Zora uh, Zoroastrian, again, uh, term, Zer Zervan, and it means gold, as does the, um, um, and this, this one here, Hware, is the effulgence of, uh, of the deity, uh, symbolized by the chakra, of course. Now, in Tibet, um, the uh, same deity which uh, was worshipped as Hware in um, the Zoroastrian 
uh, is seen as Za in Tibet, and he's um, and he's associated with uh, Hari, the form, the imminent form of Lokeshvara, which is situated in the heart of all beings, and the uh, transliteration of the Tibetan and the, and the uh, Nepalese Buddhist. Uh, uh, deity name in the heart is usually H R I H. Now, in the Sanskrit, Hari and Hira mean both mean gold and yellow. And uh, from the uh, uh, this lost root H R and uh, Sura is another variant which means uh, gold or yellow. And in the uh, uh, the Western tradition, of course, the Chi Rho, uh, Greek letters Chi and Rho are the root of the, um, the word chryso, which means gold. This is another uh, example of the connection here with this meaning of the word, as in uh, also other later words, uh, uh, or, aura, uh, meaning gold, A-U-R-A. And um, the very earliest uh, forms that we find in, the Mes- uh, in Mesopotamia, in the Near East, are actually, and I don't have them on the chart here, uh, transliterated as A-A-R-H-I-R-E and Z-A-A-L-I, Zalhi, and um, both are given the translation of gold. So the evidence seems to be uh, quite compelling that the uh, uh, actual original meaning of this particular holy name was... um, Associated with the golden light of the sun, or the or uh, the feature, the gold form of the Lord, and of course it's related to the Shalagam Gaya tree, uh, where one is enjoined to meditate always on the resplendent golden form of Lord Hari seated within the heart of the sun. Now here again is the um, the Greek Hali, uh, which was is found to use that way for Hari in uh, some Indian sources, and the Greeks, uh, during uh, some of their time in India, wrote the name of the deity Hari with a chi and a row, just as it, the early so-called Christian uh, symbol was used, chi and row. And uh, this is the way that they, uh, scholars usually transliterate uh, the, whole, the deity name of the Kingdom of Matani or Hari, and they had some argument about whether it was originally supposed to be pronounced Hari, uh, and whether the worshippers of this people were actually the Aryans. Uh, but uh, they ultimately dismissed the idea that these were the Aryans because they said it was uh, not an Indo-European language. Of course, uh, according to the evidence that I I present in this thesis, uh, Aryan was a religious epitaph and didn't necessarily indicate a person. Uh, who spoke a Indo Ar- so-called Indo-Aryan language? Now, to the word "savior," we see the uh, the root here, "so" in the Greek, "shua" in the Hebrew, "shu" in the North Egyptian deity name of Shu, Savior God, and in South Egypt, Khonshu, the Savior God. Th- and these are all by names, incidentally, of Agnitas or Asclepius or Serapis, the savior uh, deity of the uh, of the ancient world, especially worshipped as the uh, great physician and uh, the uh, redeemer. And the importance of the doctrine of redemption can be seen in the Sanskrit root. Uh, the usages and the different uh, words uh, that are derivative from the Sanskrit root. And, uh, and they uh, have the various meanings of to, to buy back, uh, to, um, to redeem, to cleanse, or purify ritually uh, by uh, a payment. And, uh, in fact, if uh, one goes through the uh, Sanskrit uh, the various uh, uh, meanings given to the root and the and the different uh, words expanded from the root in the Sanskrit dictionary, it almost uh, it almost contains the whole Christian doctrine <laughs> in the uh, definition of the of the root of this word. 
And of course, this is an, a name, in fact, of the Supreme Personality in his own, um, as his own mercy personified. The uh, holy name, as found in the Tetragrammaton, uh, J-H-V-H, in the Hebrew, uh, contains uh, this name, Yah, and uh, this holy name, Yah, is found in the numerous compound names of the deity and related uh, persons' names uh, in, the old, in the Old Testament, uh, just the dozens of different compound names with the root name Yah in them. And the fact that, uh, that this Jupiter is not actually Dispiter, as many scholars have said, can be seen in the fact that, that uh, uh, Devaspati, or uh, Dispiter in the Greek, uh, it clearly means the father of the gods. And it is a byname of Yapati or Vishnu. And uh, the um, name of the Shakti of Vishnu is Yona, as in Juno, and Yapati, which, which means, uh, in which case, Father Yah, uh, in the masculine, as here, but also uh, the, the name is the name of Sri or Lakshmi. Yah is the name of Vishnu, and Yah is also the name of Sri or Lakshmi. And so the name Yapati means either Father Yah, or it means the, uh, the father, or the, and this or variously the husband of Yah, which is Sri or Yana, Yah, Lakshmi. And here we see the um, Greek variations on the name, the uh, spelling of the name Yah. Actually, these two here are the most frequent that you see in uh, the Old Testament times in the, uh, when the Greeks wrote the holy name. This here, for instance, in the name, as we say English, Elijah, being Old Testament Hebrew form, the New Testament Greek form of the same name is Elias, Yas, on the end of it. So, um, uh, so that actually the early Hebrew was Iliahu, or Iliah, and uh, in the Greek it's Yas. Now these are also uh, suffixes found on the Greek words which indicate a masculine being. And this word, uh, Osha, or um, this, uh, this concept of uh, the Purusha, the, the masculine person, uh, and having all names be feminine or masculine is very important here. And this shows, uh, actually, that uh, this being is uh, somehow a masculine expansion of the deity Yah, the way that this works. And the word, uh, the name Usha, or Osha, is related to the Sanskrit uh, Vas, is it related to the Sanskrit word, um, no. okay, yes, right down here, Ush, As, Vash, and so forth, Vas and Ush, uh, as, and As as in Asura, means being, entity, spirit, and so forth, so that, um, on the end of, uh, of a uh, Greek word, the os or osia and so forth um, meant uh, being. And, and that's what actually uh, Greek scholars say. So, uh, the holy name Yah also appears in the Sanskrit in a number of different uh, forms. This uh, spelling is a Chaldean uh, yeah, sometimes called Inke, which uh, scholars have suggested may be uh, related to the Vaishnava Narayana. And 
in the rest of this work uh, I show, I demonstrate quite clearly that Yah of Babylon is the Yah of the Old Testament and the NHR or NHRYN deity of Egypt, Narayana. So uh, these different forms are also associated with the, uh, the fish form of uh, Matsya because in the uh, uh, Vaishnava tradition, uh, Ah uh, or Ya is a mystical, also a mystical name of uh, Matsya, as well as uh, the regular form, Vishnu form. And uh, the uh, again, the association with the water is important as the deity of the flood story and so on and so forth. Again, ha here with the epic of Gilgamesh, and here with the Noah flood story. That uh, in the Sanskrit also Ya. Is, and Yada are two names of the uh, deity, uh, the, pre the presiding deity of water. And uh, again, here are the various uh, Sanskrit forms of that, that holy name. Now, this is the way that it appears, Cha, in Matsya. And it must be related to the, uh, this pronunciation, which you find in Nepal, the, uh, um, on the name uh, used of the mountain, which is Sufficious Fin, which is sacred to Makindranath Lokeshvar. And there it said Macha Puchra. And so Macha is the way the Nepalese say the name Matsya, M A T S Y A, as it's spelled in the Vaishnava version of the Lord's name. And so they say Machaputra, but the uh, uh, the Buddhists also call him Makindranath Lokeshvar. So it's interesting just to see here the changes that the uh, the name Matsya goes through from the Vaishnava uh, family uh, into the Buddhist family. That's the very same deity. This is all uh, Narayana, Ya, the. Uh, the so-called uh, lunar and water um, associated or thunder or storm deity of the Old Testament. And secular religious scholars uh, usually equate Yah with storms or uh, thunder uh, as frequently as they um, equate Eli or, or El with uh, solar uh, worship. So. Now, if we take these two previous names we just looked at, <coughs> the Ya roots and the, uh, the Shu, we end up with the name Joshua, Yeshua, Yesu, Ishus, and so forth, Yashas, Yasho, and Compound. Um, and the, uh, the story is about Kalki and Kalki's father that... Uh, their uh, their names both are uh, Yashas Narayana and Narayana, um, excuse me, Yashas Narayana, Vishnu Yashas, uh, Yash, um, Yasho Krista or Krista Yashas or Hari Yashas. And uh, it's interesting to note that in uh, Vaishnava sources, Krishna has, uh, I think, over a dozen different sons and a daughter. Uh, whose names include the compound uh, Yashas. Um, it can't be a coincidence that uh, Krishna's, uh, Krishna has more sons named Yashas uh, in um, certain sources than in, in any other besides the, in the use of the name Ch Charu, which means beloved, which is directly la related to the Latin word uh, Karu or Karus. So, um, a by name of Khonshu, Agnitas, or Asclepius, uh, the uh, great physician of the Western tradition, is Ishus, which is obviously related to the Greek Ishus or um, Yashus in the Sanskrit. Uh, it's, yeah, like here's, here's the Greek Yashus. This is a by name, again, of Asclepius, the healing deity. Now, again, uh, we see a very ancient root. Here with the V, here's the U, you know, these different uh, late derivatives. The U with the R. 
with the P. In the, in the Egyptian, uh, the glyph itself for in is the water glyph of Narayana, uh, or Ya. So that the, uh, it's kind of like a seed mantra. The, just as the Shah Shu is a, in the name of the deity as the savior, uh, the uh, the glyph for uh, for in the in sound seems to be there uh, principally in the uh, this particular name of uh, the deity re that relates to water. Now the, the Na uh, Nazarenus Greek form, you know, and and uh, Egypt and uh, the Nazarene. Uh, this, in fact, in the earlier form is Naharayim. Uh, the Egyptians, I can't find my N-H-R-Y-N. Okay, all right, this right, this is here. This should be N-H-R-Y-N. It looks kind of like a U to me, but, uh, okay. This, this was the, one of the root names of the deity, Nara, like in Sanskrit, Nara Narayana. Uh, the Greeks, of course, substituted the L for the R again, so there we see um, uh, NHL, from which we get Nile or Nihilus. Then, he, so it was actually probably in NHR like Nara, and the Hebrew it's Nahar uh, for for water, and and the the Egyptians called the land uh, just above Judea the land of Narayan, spelled N H R Y N. Uh, this spelling N H R Y N is very clearly Narayana. And the, uh, the ancient Hebrews, uh, their version of this N-H-R-O-I-N, they also call the land uh, the headwaters of the Jordan, which means descender. And of course the doctrine in, in the East is that the, the heavenly river of absolution descends from the foot of the Lord and the, lone in, the, Lord and the Lamb on his throne in heaven. Uh, the River Jordan came from the land of Naharayim. Now you see what's happened here is that instead of using the H as a semi-vowel, uh, as in Nar or Narayan, uh, the, uh, because of the problem about the addition of, uh, of vowel sounds, the ancients had exploded the word, adding an A there and an A, a there, so that Narayim uh, Naharayim, excuse me, so that Narayana, or uh, Narayim, became Naharayim. Then what happened was the, the symbol for H, and the extra sound in there, Naharayim, became, uh, over time, changed from a soft breathing, Naharayim, to a hard, Nahar, and the R became L. Uh, the soft breathing also uh, went through this, um, transition to a sylvan nasal, and we see all the typical R and L interchanges, and this this business about uh, the syllabants, uh, the uh, aspirate and the sylvant interchange, and the soft aspirate to a, a harder guttural, guttural uh, sound here, and so what happens over a period of time is that the the, the word naharayim, which was a corruption of narayana spelled in the Egyptian N-H-R-Y-N, the root of the word uh, meaning a uh, river or water, or fresh water, Nahar in the Hebrew, transformed uh, into Nahal, Nazal, and so forth. And by the time uh, of the recording of, uh, of uh, things in the, in the Old Testament, we see that it, that it becomes the the Naharayim person of Naharayim, uh, the the person uh, or the place of becomes a Nazarene because of the, this change here. And there was no uh, no Nazareth uh, in the Old Testament. However, the Nazareth of the New Testament is a uh, north is in the northern area, and the whole northern area at, in the ancient times, of course, was called the land of Naharayim, or Narayana. And uh, the Jordan descends uh, from the foot of the Lord uh, in that land, 
which was called the Kingdom of Hari or Kuru, also by the Egyptians. And the, um, uh, of course, in the New Testament, the uh, the heavenly Jordan is supposed to be descending from the foot of the Lord and the Lamb. And in the Egyptian tradition, uh, the heavenly heavenly uh, Nile uh, was coming from the foot of the Lord, Osi- so-called Osiris or uh, Narayan, uh, in the up in the uh, headwaters. In, in the far uh, jungle or mountainous re- regions uh, of the southern Nile. The Basileo, or sacred king, regent. You look at the root of this word. We, we see the Latin rex and the Greek, excuse me, Latin uh, reg, Regna and so forth, and the and the Greek Rex, and uh, this is obviously related to the Sanskrit Raj, and of course Raja Raja. This is the name of the King of uh, Kings, name of Krishna, and um, that the Basileo or Basudeo in the Was Nome of Egypt, which was South Egypt, uh, capital of Thebes, it was Wasadale. There is also a um, a uh, capital of the kingdom of Hari, one of the major cities, was called Washukani. And uh, actually, there's, there's also a Sanskrit word like this, Washukani, which uh, means uh, uh, Vashuki Anna. Um, Vashuki is the name of um, uh, Ananta Sheshanaga. So perhaps there's a, some relationship between the uh, city of Washukani and uh, the form of the Lord of Anant Shishnaga as Vashuki. Anyway, uh, that this is the same deity as the Basileo, uh, the Basileo, the incarnation king, is made clear by um, the uh, study of coins which bear the translated inscription uh, on one side, Basileo, which appears on the other side, as uh, Vasudeva. So, um, also there are early Buddhist sources in which it's stated that Vasudeva is the father of the gods. What does sacrifice really mean? mean? What is the root? If we look at the root sacra, in, in Latin, zak means pure. In the Hebrew, uh, we see a zakr, zekr memorial. This is related to uh, sacraments. All sacraments are types of memorials, and they are um, they are related to uh, sacrificial actions and so forth. But uh, what, what really is the connection of all of these things is the, uh, the Sanskrit root, SKR, which uh, means, uh, uh, and SK, uh, suk, <coughs> or such, or shukra, and it means variously white or pure, holy, undefiled, etc., and this is a, a name of Balaram. And things were made pure, holy, undefiled, and so forth by, um, by the memorial, see, as in the, in the Hebrew, by the memorial rites of sacrifice. That's how things were made, uh, shuchi, sukha, uh, undefilable or holy. So this is a very important name of Balaram, Shuk- Shukrabala, or Shukrabala, and uh, it really identifies him as the god of sacrifice and the, uh, uh, the origin of all that is sacred or holy. The, the uh, name Krista is related to this, the Greek charisma, and the, um, or English charisma, 
and the um, and also the Greek chrisma. It's a pun, chrism, which is the oil of anointing. And this is usually the derivation that uh, uh, is found most reasonable for the name Christos. It's the, this is coming from the chrism, the holy oil of anointing. But in fact, uh, the evidence shows that there's a relationship between the root, the Sanskrit root charu, and the Latin karus, meaning beloved. And uh, the word chara, or karsh, maya, karsh, and so forth, root karsh, which means to pull or to draw to oneself. Um, this is related to the English words cherish and caress, <coughs> to pull to oneself. So that uh, karshneya and karshana, like in Sankarshana, uh, and Krishna are actually all related. Krista is related. All having the meaning of uh, to attract, to pull to oneself, um, uh, to be uh, beloved, uh, and uh, deriv derivative and associative meanings of uh, to love or to be beloved or to be precious or to be sweet or uh, just um, uh, the the one who is attracting everyone uh, and a whole lot of just very pleasant and positive association words that are associated uh, that, that are actually uh, derivative from this root and the uh, something that I don't show here which is very important is that the uh, the people the pun on plow is really important the the glyph for plow in Egyptian is the symbol uh, for the word love. And which makes sense if you consider the meaning of karsh, which is to draw or pull towards oneself, as in caress. Now, uh, and, and charisma, as to, uh, to draw to oneself. Uh, the usual translation of the name Krishna or Krista is the all-attractive one, or the one who is drawing everyone to himself. Now, the other, the pun on this, of course, is that the word meaning plow, uh, there are so many different uh, derivative and uh, compound words having to do with plowing, and the Kristayanas, so actually just like Christians, the Kristayanas were variously considered to be uh, the five tribes uh, that worshipped Hari or Vishnu, the Purus and the Yadus and so forth, or the entire human race, or the sons of Aryaman, uh, or the, the descendants of Aryaman, and, uh, uh, or uh, persons who were followers of Krishna. So we see that the, uh, the actual word Christian, term Kristayana, uh, in uh, Sanskrit, it, it really uh, is directly analogous to its use, um, in its use to the term Christian in the Western world. This uh, here is beside, you know, and uh, being, usually translated the presence something about the presence of the Lord, but uh, actually it means the being, the masculine being, uh, who is beside. Now, this is a little bit different. The O reading here is uh, uh, the body, poor. A slave body was the... Uh, ref some slaves were referred to as uh, poor, just as bodies. But here's the being in the body, a little bit different one here. Now, the parish, the parish is an extension of the uh, of the body uh, in in the community of the uh, presiding deity of the temple or church which is at its center, so that meaning is somewhat preserved there. Uh, P L S P L S P L Z. Three different readings with somewhat different meanings over time in uh, the Greek but all are actually uh, forms of Purusha. And, of course, with the this same word here, P-R-S, the very same word, meaning, actually, the uh, here we see the Yas, 
uh, and so forth, the other, the endings of the word with the S. Um, the pole, of course, is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew pur, meaning house or uh, body, and the Egyptian uh, pur, which means house or body. And uh, the polis was the city, of course, but it, it actually, poli or pole is city, and the full uh, word uh, polis, which the meaning of which has been lost, is really actually just polias or polizza, the Greek word, which means the being of the city, uh, sometimes translated as guardian of the city. It's really, again, the being uh, within the, the, the par, the body, uh, the temple, and so forth. Um, our English word police comes from this word here. It eventually uh, became uh, simply the guardian of the city, and that's where we get our word police from. Now, in the Asala Federation, uh, every city, of course, had its presiding form of the deity. For instance, uh, and, that, and that form of the deity there was called uh, the particular name, and then Pelias. So that, for instance, Athena of, of Athens was Athena Pelias. This is now, we see the meaning in the Sanskrit of Purusha, that we uh, have... Um, the uh, example given of Papa Purusha. Papa means sin in Sanskrit, and Purusha means uh, literally the, the embodiment of sin, or the, uh, the uh, in incarnation, or the embodiment of the personality or the spirit of sin. So he's the uh, uh, Papa Purusha. So similarly, there'll be Athena Purusha and so forth, all uh, different embodiments or, uh, of being. And uh, here's the Egyptian, Usur, of course, being Osiris. Usur, uh, the being, like in Sanskrit, Asaru, the, the uh, supreme being appearing as, so forth, or the masculine being. And here's per e Egyptian, PR. And this would also, this would be the Busiris. Um, uh, uh, the Greeks called the original place of the worship of, of Usur in uh, the... Um, in North Egypt, uh, uh, is later translated as Busiris, but is actually it was actually P.R. Usur, the house or temple of Usur. In the Hebrew, we find the very same thing. And la later, I.R. or Y.I.R. is the uh, the Hebrew uh, would be a way of expressing the Hebrew spelling of city. But uh, this uh, the there, is, there are some examples of this early form, P-E-R, for city. And Prutsi means, if you saw a modern dictionary, it probably mean, uh, say, a citizen, a dweller of the city. After a while, actually, uh, instead of the presi presiding deity of the city, the word was degraded just to mean any citizen or any dweller in the city. So in this case, right here, a Prutsi or Prutsim would probably, in, in Hebrew, in the uh, plural, would be citizens. There's your Hebrew words. Now, here's the full Sanskrit form, Purusha. The Mahayana Buddhists also c consider uh, these, the Buddha to be an incarnation of Purusha. And uh, they consider the, um, uh, the supreme form of the Buddha, or the deity, to be the Adi Purusha form. So this actual term Purusha is even used in the Mahayana Buddhism. So here we have the general idea and the doctrine that goes with it that the body uh, as well as the sanctuary and the temple and the town and the city and all by expansion are manifestations uh, or incarnations of the, uh, it's like the body of Christ doctrine of the presiding spirit of them. And here's all the different forms, root, os, phos, and so forth, the dweller in the body, the spirit, or being. Jupiter and Natalis um, actually it wasn't mother nature, it was father nature. Uh, this word is coming from the ancient root um, metra in Sanskrit and N-T-R in the Egyptian, Mitra, usually transliterated Netter. 
And uh, this word was actually used to translate uh, for the, from the name of God in the earliest Coptic translations of the Bible. Later on, uh, Egyptian names for God uh, fell out of favor because of the diabolizing process. And of course, this uh, in, in the Egyptian Book of the Dead and all Egyptian uh, inscriptions, the, the difference between a capital N, so to speak, NTR, or God, and uh, the small NTR, or gods, is very, very clear. So just as in the Sanskrit we have um, God, Natha, Lord, and then there are all the different Nathas, of the, diff the different demigods of the different realms. And uh, the Hebrew Mason is associated, uh, if the, uh, the meaning that is given to the word is a kind of a der derivative meaning because the, uh, the Nathas, so to speak, were the patrons, uh, patron deity uh, manifestations of the various gnomes uh, of uh, Egypt and uh, areas of cities of el elsewhere, and they were the um, manifestation of Bhagavan, or the possessor of all opul opulences, who was the, uh, as the patron deity, the giver, or the, the source of, of benediction. And so we see that the term Nathan uh, in Nathan in uh, the Hebrew uh, is, is actually, uh, again, the name of uh, the, the Lord or the one uh, who is the source of benediction. Just as the uh, early form in Sanskrit is NTR and later becomes NTH, in the Egyptian, the earliest form is NTR, and uh, uh, later on towards the Natha, uh, excuse me, towards the Coptic period, it becomes just NT. So there seems to be some kind of uh, chronological uh, correlation there between the very earliest use of the NTR form and the later use of the NT form in Egypt. Of course, the word Natha is also used uh, in the Mahayana Buddhist context. Uh, Lokanath is a, a, a name that is used for Lokeshvara quite a bit, and so forth. Now, this, uh, these names of the deity, the so-called uh, fertility god, and so forth, are very, very important. Like this one here, Damuzi or Tamusi. Uh, the Hebrew, uh, in Sanskrit, again, uh, Tamo Guna, means uh, the mode of ignorance or uh, evil or what is defiled, uh, and so forth. In Hebrew, tame means what is defiled, what is um, profane, and so forth. So there's obviously a connection there between the Sanskrit and the Hebrew. And this name, as a name of the deity, has an incredible correspondence in this name of Krishna as tamase, meaning the expeller of tamo, or ignorance. So this is a nice name of Vishnu or Krishna. Uh, now... This deity is always connected with this one and this one and this one. As various forms of the youthful uh, form of the so-called uh, fertility, solar fertility god, according to much modern scholarship. Now we see direct correspondence here. This is the name of Krishna, Adisha. Adi in the, the Sanskrit meaning is supreme, or first, primal. Adisha, Isha, Lord. Adinesh. Mesh, like Nata and Netra, means Lord. Naya, like Natra, Netra, uh, and Mesh, means Lord in Sanskrit also. So here's the name Adinaya, meaning Supreme Lord, or, or Primal Lord. Adinesh, meaning the same thing as this. Adisha, uh, Lord, Supreme Lord, same as this. And these are all three the names of the uh, deity the form. This is the one that the, is used all throughout the, the Old Testament by the Hebrews. Adoniah, Adonis, Attis, Attis, Adisha, Adonis, Adinesh, Adoniah, Adoniah. So if we take <coughs> the previously discussed holy names El and Yah, and make a compound out of them, we end up with the holy name Elihu or Elijah, 
Elias in the Greek, Solius in the Latin, Helios in the Greek, HR for Heru or Hari, Us for Usur or Osiris in the Egyptian. Now, the uh, original or the um, principal deity HR or Hari in Egypt was not the later Horus son of Osiris. <coughs> and originally Usur and Hari were considered brothers. In other words, Hari the elder is not the same as Horus the son of Osiris. So that this compound name here stands for the two brothers Hari and Usur. the two deities, or uh, manifestations of the same deity, Ili and Yah, the land of Syria. This is another variant, the name Cyrus, uh, as in uh, Kyrios, uh, the, the C R U S. Kyrios is also another uh, form I don't have on here, variant. <coughs> Surya, this is the name of Krishna, as is Surya. Again, this is HR, Hari, and Ya. This is a, the important name associated with the so called solar uh, dynasty. And this is the, and solar symbol, symbolism, important name associated with the so-called lunar dynasty uh, of the Yadus and uh, water symbolism. <coughs>